Hello, this is Wolfman611 from WolfmansBytes.com and this is video review number 9, Microsoft Sidewinder X6 Gaming Keyboard. Now, what you first notice about this little puppy here when you get her going is, uh, you might be able to see it on the screen there, is it's all, it's backlit. You've got two different colors of lighting here, you got like an amber type of color, and over here, basically, the standard keys and the number pad keys here are red in terms of color. When you, uh, program the keys, the keys go yellow. It lets you know that you're inside of uh, the programming mode as opposed to the standard keyboard operation that you'd use under Windows and stuff like that. At the very top, in terms of buttons, you got your, uh, this one here. This, this is the configuration button. This calls up the uh, Microsoft IntelliPoint software, which is what pretty much you got to use to, to get the full uh, functions out of this keyboard. Okay, this button here is the auto run feature which there's a little light there which I'm not plugged in right now so it's not going to uh, keyboard's not going to function as it's supposed to but when you have the IntelliPoint software installed when you hit that that red little LED light there will come on beside it the next button to that this one here is the actual uh, macro record which if you just want to do a quick dirty little macro you can do that there hit a few keys hit the button away you go the next button changes the actual game profiles. If you want to program all the keys, say for a flight sim or something like that, that button there, this one here, will actually go through the different profiles you have set up for the keyboard. you got three LED lights here that light up, depending on what profile you're in. The buttons beside that are the actual media keys, which you use to do the playing and pausing, you know, previous track, next track, along with uh, muting the actual audio on your computer. Beside that, this one here, if you can see, you turn this down, the keyboard lighting goes right off. Now I can't get access to the overhead light in here because I've got a bunch of camera gear in the way, but you probably might be able to get a bit of this to turn it back up. It goes up. Overall, it looks pretty good. It's a lot better than the uh, the Microsoft uh, keyboard I reviewed previously, the gaming one, the Reclusa, I think it was, the one made by Razer. That had pretty decent lighting, but I think this lighting here is a lot better in terms of being evenly uh, distributed across the keyboard. You'll notice that these underneath here are yellow these keys here. And I should mention these keys too, by the way, they're actually 12 independent macro keys as well. So there's a little shift button here you can see that I'm pushing right there. And when you hit that, that'll give you 12 functions here instead of just six. So them six buttons can be 12 different macros, depending on how you got the shift key uh, in use. Overall, pretty good, uh, pretty good keyboard. I've been banging on it now for well over a year and it's not uh, giving me any issues at all. The next dial you see up here is the uh, dial for turning your computer audio up and down which also the one thing about these dials they work pretty nice some keyboards you actually they're loose and just feel cheap these ones here there's not really any really play in them and they work the way they're supposed to over here on the number pad key you got the uh, the calculator button you hit that and that'll bring up your Windows calculator what's interesting about this keyboard and actually one of its probably biggest features it has is the fact that if you, uh, here, let me zoom this out a bit here. The one interesting thing about this keyboard is that you can turn around and actually the number pad key on it. Number pad keys. That's one thing I don't like there too. You can see it here, this reflection. I don't know what they, what kind of material they use to coat this area here. But it's real bad in terms of the way it reflects light. It doesn't look very good. Now, when I first got the keyboard, I thought that was a plastic coating that you could actually just take off. But that in turn, it turns out that's the actual keyboard. No coating there to take off. But one of the nice things about this keyboard is you can turn around and do this here. You can pull the number pad right off the computer. That's pretty interesting the way that works. Now the whole idea for that is that you might want a little keyboard that doesn't take up you know a ton of space. And therefore, there you go. It doesn't have any keyboard or a number pad key. The neat thing about it though is that, <clears throat> say for whatever reason, you like playing the way everybody else does, you can turn around and take this, this number pad key here and now stick it on the other side of the computer. And the real neat thing is, it's all held in by magnets. So that's not gonna go, you know, within reason. I mean, if you really start shaking, it's gonna fly off, but for the most part, you can turn, you know, keyboard upside down, whatever you want, and it's not gonna move. Now, what's keeping that number pad on there, take that off, you might be able to see it here. These two buttons right here, or <laughs> two buttons, I mean two magnets, one there and one over there, really, really strong. 
I took a piece of steel the other day just to see, and they, they really do, uh, things snap to them <laughs> when you get anything steel near it. So the number pad key, when you get that on there, or number pad keys, I should say, I don't know why I keep saying that wrong, probably the heat in here, um, just goes on like that. You notice a second later, it turns around and activates, it all lights up. Put it back to the way it was here. So yeah, overall, it's a pretty good keyboard. There's not, uh, I haven't had any kind of complaints with it or anything. It's all worked the way it's supposed to. One interesting thing about it, though, is that a lot of gaming keyboards, especially when they mention the fact that they are actually gaming, will come with uh, USB ports. And as you can see, no such feature on this keyboard at all. Now, for me, it doesn't really matter because I never, uh, I never use the USB ports on keyboards anyway. But it's nice to have in terms of if you have a... Uh, say like a USB key or something like that, a thumb drive you want to plug in really quick and not have to uh, do too much screwing around. Okay, so yeah, you can pick up this keyboard I think online if you look around for about uh, $70. You do a little bit of shopping and stuff. <clears throat> so this is Wolfman611 from WolfmansBytes.com and this has been the uh, Microsoft Sidewinder X6 gaming keyboard, video review number 9. Don't forget, if you want to get a detailed uh, text review version of this video review, it's on the website as well. You can find it there. There's more detail on the keyboard in the text review than what you're seeing here in the video. But uh, that's it. That's the Microsoft Sidewinder X6 gaming keyboard. This is Wolfman611, signing out. Okay, before I uh, go here, I might as well uh, get the keyboard all lit up and finally made it over to the lights so it'll kill myself. So here's the uh, Microsoft Sidewinder X6 all lit up into its beautiful glory. You can see the amber keys over here, where my finger is. Here's what happens when you turn the dial down nice and slow. Lots of, uh, quite a bit of light actually comes off that thing when there's no lights on. So anyway, that's it. They're all lit up. Microsoft Sidewinder X6 gaming keyboard.